Yo, what's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Tim Stoddard here with Sober Nation. We got um, some very exciting updates for you. I'm going to jump in on this real quick. I'm going to wait for the, uh, for the live to get some more traction because usually it takes, sorry, usually it takes about a couple of seconds for people to kind of jump on. First and foremost, very exciting. I did an update or a, a video last week. Uh, we have been invited to a council in Washington, D.C. this weekend. It's um, Recovery Research Awards. I get to hang out with a bunch of really smart people who have been doing some groundbreaking work on addiction. I'm going to do, I'm going to create as much content as I can around this event. I think I'm going to get some interviews. I think I'm going to um, probably go live a few times. It's going to be really exciting because this is like super important work. Uh, the more we understand about addiction, the better we are to treat it and help people. So that's really cool. Um, also, I've been, I've been researching and networking in Nashville a lot. If there's anybody from Tennessee that's going to be looking into this, please shoot me an email. It's Tim, T-I-M, at SoberNation.com. Nashville really has my attention. There's some really cool people doing some, some great work up there. And I'm excited to kind of dive into that a little bit. So if we can find anybody, that's great. Now... Now that we've got that out of the way, the subject for what I'm talking about is in response to a message that I received this week. And I went back and forth with this woman over and over again, and it was about her children. And there's going to be some really tough love and some, some hard truths to understand in this. And her question was pretty simple. It wasn't even really a question. She was just looking for advice. She has a, a son who keeps on relapsing no matter what. She does, and she has done everything that she possibly can to help her son, which we all would, right? I mean, seeing a loved one go through this is terrible. It's terrible. I've been there. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been there. It's not fun. It's really heartbreaking. Hold on. Let me fix the lighting on this a little bit. I'm in our conference room, so it's kind of dim lighting. I think that looks a little bit better. And my advice to her was not what she wanted to hear. And I can understand that once, here's, here's my perception on this. It's easy to say that addicts are sick people and I get it. It's convenient. Um, it's true. There's a lot of truth to it, but it gets to a point where once you've been given the help, once you've gotten some sobriety, then you can't be labeled as a sick person anymore because you've, you've been fed the medicine that you need. At that point on, if somebody decides to relapse, I think we have to treat that as a conscious decision because if you don't, then there's no, there's no consequences. Then it's just, oh, this person's sick. He needs help or she needs help. We have to love him or her back to health. And don't get me wrong. Love is very important. Um, being there for somebody is very important. But I think that it does get to a breaking point where sometimes people just need to see and feel the consequences of their actions. If that didn't happen to me, I know I would have never taken this seriously. I can think of dozens of people and friends that I've met where it wasn't until they really hit that breaking point where they saw the two roads in their life, in their life kind of split and they could go down this path, which was obviously not going to end well, or they could go down this path, which had some hope. But regardless of how difficult the second path was going to be, they knew that there was no fail safe. There was no fluffy pillow that somebody was going to lay out for you to put your head down at night. You had to make a decision. You had to make a choice to do the hard work that was required to get sober, to get clean, to get over whatever kind of life hurdle that we have, right? So I think this is important. I think it's something that people don't want to talk about because how do you tell a parent to cut their child off? (laughs) You know? Like even just sound, even just saying it here, it sounds super heartless and it sounds uh, really cruel. But if we look at it from kind of a, what's up, Kathy? Congratulations. If we look at it from a really pragmatic standpoint, your other option, if you're not willing to kind of draw the line in the sand and say like, hey, I've had enough. We've done enough of this. You're on your own now. Your other option is to just continue going on this route and this repeated, repeated behavior over and over and over again. Um, there, there needs to be a decision for both the parent or the sibling or the loved one or whatever. 
and the person that's struggling with addiction. That this is it. Enough is enough. Let's make some real choices so that you can better your life. And I think without that, it's just really difficult. You know, I think it's really, really difficult for somebody to get that get to that pit point in their stomach where they just see that if they don't make some real changes, they're going to be screwed. Because as long as you have the backup plan and as long as you have somebody that's willing to bail you out, it's really tough to get to that spot in your mind where you make that conscious decision to, to do the work required. So that's my two cents on it. Um, I would definitely love to hear your guys' feedback because I know this is a sensitive issue. I'm sure that every case is different and Uh, Every case probably should be treated differently. But with that being said, my experience has always been that if they're in addiction, you can treat them as a sick person. You can do what you need to do to get them to help and maybe go a little bit further than what you traditionally would when you would help somebody. But if they got clean, if they have even a month, two months, and they make that conscious effort, um, then their recovery should be strong enough where at the very least they know that if they're feeling squirrely they can ask for help and if they don't do that if they don't take that action and they decide to go back to the way that they were living (laughs) it's hard you know it's hard to know that point and it's hard to get to that spot where you say this is your decision you're on your own i want to hear your guys's input because i can see it in my head but i don't certainly don't have the exact answer for it And especially because it's on such a case-by-case basis. So if you guys have experience on this, please let me know what you say. More importantly, tell everybody else about it because I guarantee you these videos reach thousands and thousands of people. There's somebody watching this that is going through this shit right now. Um, If you need me, Tim, once again, T-I-M at SoberNation.com. Hit me up. If anybody out there is struggling, you can always contact me. You can always call the hotline. We're here for you. Everybody else in this group is here for you. I appreciate you guys so much. So there's my little Monday rant. Looking forward to getting to the week. Looking forward to hearing from all of you. Talk to you soon. Peace.